Hello and welcome. It is Easter Sunday. Uh, we have a tradition at church where I say he is risen and then the congregation would say he is risen indeed. So uh, on, on our online service, I'm going to say he is risen and wherever you're watching this, just declare this. Even if you're alone, uh, maybe you're with some people watching this. I don't know. Even if you feel a little crazy doing it, just declare this over this day, uh, um, uh, over your life, and, and, and just declare, He is risen. He is risen indeed. <laughs> God is good, and it's so good to be here today. We're going to spend some time in the Word, just reflecting on the the just the 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 good news of Jesus Christ and and the resurrection and how powerful and awesome that is, and uh, we're gonna sing a few songs or a couple songs, uh, but we're gonna start with a word of prayer. So let's open with a word of prayer, dearly Father. Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. We thank you for Resurrection Sunday, this day that we um, celebrate your resurrection from the grave, Jesus. And we thank you for everything that you did, for your death on the cross that covers our sins, that, that, that gives us relationship with you and gives us eternal life in you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for that sacrifice, Lord. And we thank you that you didn't stay in the grave, Lord, but that you rose and that that tomb is empty because you are alive, Lord. We thank you for the life that we have in you. We love you, Jesus, and we give you this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Sonia.
I'm going to be reading this morning out of John chapter 20. And it starts in verse 1. It says this, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've placed him, where they put him. Verse 3 says, So Peter and the other disciple, the disciple whom Jesus loved, uh, started for the tomb. Both were running, but the disciple whom Jesus loved, the other disciple, outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciple went back to where they were staying. He goes on in verse 11. It says, Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. And he asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold Onto me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with, with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told him that he had said these things to her. I have seen the Lord was Mary's testimony. And I want to talk a little bit about that today. And so it, it, in that verse, that's that's Mary's proclamation. That's one of the proclamations of Easter. Uh, and it changes everything. And, and, and it means so much to Mary, but to the other disciples and to you and me. And that proclamation is, I've seen Jesus. I've seen the Lord. When she showed up that day, uh, Jesus being alive in her mind wasn't even a possibility. She wasn't thinking about that. She was, she was coming to care for the body. And she shows up and the stone is rolled away. And there wasn't this instant like, yeah, that's awesome. The stone's rolled away. He must be alive. But no, there was this thought that, oh no. Oh no, that Jesus! somebody stole Jesus' body. Somebody took the body because the stone is gone, the body's gone. So the only explanation is uh, 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 somebody must have taken the body because, because Mary was looking for a dead Jesus. She was looking for a body. She was looking for Jesus, but she was looking for Jesus dead. And when she didn't see Jesus dead, she just couldn't see what was happening. Um, and... Uh, you know, she has this amazing, uh, this amazing experience. She encounters two angels. It's interesting to me that so often in Scripture, in fact, I think uh, almost every time in Scripture, but not this time, uh, anytime we see people have an encounter with an angel, usually that encounter begins with fear. And the angel has to say, hey, don't be afraid. Um, but, but, but usually people are in fear. And, and Mary's just like, what's going on? Where's Jesus? And, and, and she has this encounter with the angels, and she's still... She still can't see what's happening. And even when she sees Jesus, she doesn't really see Jesus. She thinks he's the gardener because Jesus being alive and just walking around the garden is so far outside of the realm of possibility as far as Mary's concerned. And, and so Jesus calls her name and she finally realizes that, oh my gosh, it's Jesus. And, 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 and she declares, I've seen Jesus. And I want that to be the testimony of my life. I want that to be the testimony of your life. That, man, I've seen the Lord. I know Jesus and I've seen 
Jesus. You know, the fact is, I, I think that we tend to see what we're looking for. Mary was looking for a dead Jesus. And so even when the evidence uh, was presented to her that Jesus was alive, she still was just kind of stuck in, until Jesus um, uh, reveals himself to her, until Jesus um, uh, calls her name, she's kind of still just in the mind frame that Jesus is dead, that she's looking for uh, uh, the body because we tend to see and find what we're looking for. Uh, as an example, if I were to ask you today, if, if you were in a crowd of say 50 people, if you were in a crowd of 50 people, and uh, I were to say to you, I want you to look around the crowd, uh, and I want you to find out how many people are wearing red shirts. And I gave you a minute to look around and do that. And uh, you, you look around, you scan the crowd, you look for every red shirt you can find. And then, and then uh, when the minute's up, I said, okay, now tell me how many teenagers are in the crowd. <laughs> you probably would have no idea because you were looking for the red shirts and you were paying attention to the red shirts. You probably would have been able to answer fairly accurately how many red shirts there were in the crowd of 50. But without looking around again, it would be hard to say how many teenagers were with you or how many kids or whatever the question was. Because we tend to see what we're looking for. And, and, and I, want us, I want us to look for Jesus in our life. And sometimes we end up in circumstances and we end up in um, uh, uh, situations and we end up just in pain and brokenness in our lives. And it's hard to see Jesus. And maybe uh, uh, we see all of the, 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 the trials and we see all of the, the trouble and the problems that we have in life and even our own shortcomings and our own um, mistakes and our own sin, the brokenness of the world and the politics that are going on around. And it all seems so huge and everything seems so broken. And it's hard sometimes to see Jesus in those things or see Jesus through those things because all we see is the mess that's around us and it starts to seem bigger than Jesus. But I want to encourage us today, I want to encourage us Easter that we need to look for Jesus today. We need to start looking for him because when we see Jesus, we realize that man, he's bigger than our problems. He's even bigger than our own brokenness and sin and pain. He's bigger than the brokenness of this world. Jesus is bigger, but we need to look for him and see him. I love Psalm 46, eight, it says, come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see, because seeing is so important all throughout the gospel. When John the Baptist points to Jesus out to his disciples, he in, in uh, uh, John chapter one, verse 35, he, he, he says, behold the Lamb of God, behold. And some of John's disciples approach Jesus and they say, where is he staying? And Jesus' response is, come and see. Come and see. Uh, time after time, we read about Philip in chapter 12. We want to see Jesus. In the very story, we're talking about the story of the, the, the resurrection we just read in John chapter 20. John talks about the disciple that looked into the tomb to see. Uh, he saw that the tomb was empty and that the linen clothes were neatly folded. He saw and he believed. If you read on a little further, you read that Thomas, he won't believe until he can see. And so a life lived in response to Jesus' resurrection, lived uh, as a disciple. I really believe this, friends. I really believe this, church. A life that's lived as a follower, as a disciple of Jesus, is not, uh, listen, theology is important. Our understanding of the word of God and, and how we interpret that and apply that to our lives is important. But, but there's also so much of following Jesus. There's so much of the Christian life that's experiential. And there's this invitation to come and see and not just hear the word, not just know the word, but to experience it and to see what God will do. It's not only theology, it's experiential. And I, I want us to understand that, that, that the followers of Jesus, they've come, they've encountered Jesus, they've seen him and they've responded and, 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 and believe that he's alive and present. And that when we really believe that theological truth, 
that, that God is alive and present in every situation at all times, even as we're, we're, we're sharing this time uh, in this video that Jesus is present here right now because we've come in his name and we're, we're talking about him. But there's something to be experienced in that. That, 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 that Mary came to the tomb early that day and she saw that the stone had been rolled away. She didn't see it as an empty tomb of life because Jesus was alive. She only saw that the stone had been rolled away and she just, it, 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 she saw death and now it was worse because they didn't even have Jesus' body anymore. She's consumed with grief. It's like she sees everything, but she doesn't see everything. You know what I mean? And sometimes I think that we go through that just like Mary did that day is where we see everything. We kind of know, we have this knowledge about who Jesus is. We have this knowledge about the cross that Jesus died for our sins so that we could be forgiven of our sins, so that we can have eternal life with him, so that we can have relationship with God, with our creator. Sometimes we know that, like we see it, but we don't always see it. We don't always see it on a daily basis basis we we don't apply it to our experience right now we don't apply it to the situations that we're dealing with right now and think about what that means and the implication that God is with us that the Holy Spirit has been given to us that the very presence of God is with us when we go to work when we go to school when we're at home whatever we're doing this idea that that, that Jesus is 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 with us that God is with us the Holy Spirit is with us See, Mary sees, but she doesn't really see Jesus yet. And that's interesting, and it's a place that I think in our lives as followers of Jesus, we don't always see him, just like Mary, even when he's right there, right in front of us. We see, and we say that Jesus is risen, and maybe we even believe that Jesus is risen. We don't really see him and his power in our lives on a daily basis, and what he wants to do, especially when we go through challenging difficult times and we only see our problems and we only see our own fears and our own like I said brokenness because it just seems so big and sometimes I wonder if we don't see Jesus like really see Jesus because we're not really looking for Jesus we're just looking for our problem to be over or we're looking for this situation to get easier or we're looking for this person to behave the way we want them to behave rather than saying, God, where are you in the middle of this? Jesus, I want to see you. Jesus, I think, can be seen in like those, those really good mountaintop experiences, the joyous moments in life. Jesus is experiencing that and can be seen in that. But, but church, I want to tell you that Jesus is experienced and he's seen on the worst days too when we're in those valleys man and when we're really going through it and when it feels like everything's falling apart that sometimes i think that's where we can see jesus the most is in those moments those moments of desperation if we would take time to stop and to pray and to just claim the blood of jesus over our life and to to to, to go to the word and to take time to find Jesus in those situations as hard as it may be and as painful as it may be Jesus wants to be seen in those moments you know and it's in those times I think the really hard times the difficult times when we when we stop to find Jesus it's not that he necessarily waves some kind of a magic wand to just take all the pain away to take all the troubles away that everything instantly is just easy and better Sometimes it's difficult, but but Jesus walks with us and Jesus cries with us and he gives us strength to take the next step and then the next step and then the next step, one step at a time. And so I wanna tell you today, church, Jesus has been raised from the dead. Jesus is alive. And when we open our lives to who he is and we open our lives to the spirit, I want to tell you, we see Jesus because he's the one that we're looking for. When we spend time in his word, when we take time when we're experiencing something, we say, God, where are you in this? And, 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 and what do you want to show me in this? And what do you want to teach me? How do you want to stretch me? Jesus is present in that. And you know, it's interesting when we see Jesus, another thing that's interesting, when we really see Jesus, and he changes our plans. 
He changes everything. Mary went that day to, to, to care for the body, the dead body of Jesus, to, uh, uh, to anoint it with oils and spices and, and, and to really prepare it for permanent burial, uh, if you will. And um, man, when she saw Jesus, it sure changed her day. It didn't just change her day, it changed her whole life. Her plans were changed. And I really believe that today, that when we really experience Jesus, when we really see Jesus, man, it changes everything. And it changes our plans. It can change everything. And uh, we need to be open to that, that man, when, 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 I, when, I, when I see Jesus and I really see Jesus in a situation, maybe I need to change course or direction in how I'm dealing with that situation. And, and, and Jesus has a right to do that. When we love Jesus and we're really following, when we're really following, before we close and before we pray, there's one other part of the story that I just wanted to encourage you with and, and direct you to is that it's interesting that we read in John 20 there is, is Mary's trying to figure out what's happening. She actually sees Jesus. She sees him. But like we've been saying, she doesn't really see who it is. She doesn't really see that it's Jesus. She thinks it's the gardener. And as she's kind of in this confusion, Jesus does something specific for Mary. And it's in that moment that she really, she sees Jesus, sees, sees Jesus. Not just sees a person that happens to be Jesus, but sees that that is Jesus right here in the garden, in this moment of grief. And it's when he says, Mary, he says her name. When he says her name, she recognizes him. And what's incredible about that is, is as we talk about kind of the experiential uh, uh, relationship that we have with Jesus, it really is all about relationship. It's about relationship with him. It's not about uh, legalism. It's not about even religion or anything like that. It's about this relationship that God wants to have with you and with me. And when she hears Jesus call her name, it's unmistakable. She knows who he is in that moment because of the relationship and the love that she has for Jesus. And so the same way that he called Mary by name, and as soon as she heard him call uh, her name, she knew she saw him. She saw Jesus. She understood what was happening, at least, at least in part. She knew he was alive. In the same way that he called her name, I wanna encourage you today, I wanna to encourage you this Easter that, that Jesus knows your name. First of all, Jesus is alive and he knows your name and that he's calling to you by name and he wants you to see him, to really see him, that you would look beyond your own anxieties and your own fears and your own pain and your own problems and, and your own stresses and, 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 and not just on a personal level, but all the craziness in the world that we would look beyond the craziness that's going on in the world around us and that we would look through those things and beyond those things and that we would really see Jesus and that Jesus is alive and that Jesus is moving and working. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal himself to us. Jesus wants to be seen by you and by me, and he wants to be experienced on a relational level, not just, not just a, an a te, uh, on a textbook level or on a um, kind of a, uh, um, uh, like I said, I, theological level. I, I, again, theology is important. That's the understanding of the scriptures and, and the interpretation of the scriptures and the word of God, but, but that that it needs to move beyond just this kind of academic knowledge and, and, and that it moves into this relational experience that we would really see Jesus in every area of our life, in every situation, the good ones, the bad ones, that we'd be able to see and proclaim that I have seen Jesus and that Jesus is alive. He's not dead, he's alive. I wanna tell you in uh, 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 2021, we're in 2021, Jesus is alive in 2021. He is alive and well, and he's active, and he knows you, and he loves you, and man, he wants to be seen and known by you. And so 
I'm going to pray for us and I want to encourage you today that Jesus is alive and that Jesus loves you. And I want to encourage you to take time this week, take time in the word and through prayer, just to acknowledge the presence of Jesus in your life, the living savior, just experience the Holy spirit and the revelation that he wants to bring to you, a risen savior and hope beyond a hopeless world. There's a lot of fear and hopelessness in this world. And I want to tell you what, that, that Jesus and the hope and the life that we have in Christ supersedes any amount of hopelessness or mess that this world is in. And we need to have faith in that. And we need to experience that so that we can be a witness to other people that, yeah, Jesus really is alive and I've seen him. And let me tell you what he's done for me and in my life. Let me pray for us. Dear Father, Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you, Lord. I pray that you would, um, um, I pray that you would make yourself known to us, Lord Jesus, that, that you would uh, just make us eager to see you today, Jesus. Whatever we're experiencing, whatever kind of mood we're in, whatever kind of uh, situation or crisis we're dealing with, Lord, I pray that we would see you in the middle of it, Lord that we would see you in the good times, that we would be thankful to you, that we would um, remember um, how good you are to us, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I just pray for a relational and experiential faith, Lord Jesus. Uh, Lord, we love you. We thank you for your death. And Lord, we thank you for your life and that you're alive today. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the revelation that you give us. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we end the video, if you've never asked Jesus into your life, you say, man, I want to see Jesus. I really want to see him. I want to see him in my life, and I want to see him every day. Like, really see him. Not just kind of know about him, but I want to see him. Uh, it starts with relationship with him, and it starts with asking for forgiveness of our sins and asking him into our heart and into our life to be Lord of our life. And so I want to say a prayer real quick. And if you've never done that before, would you say this prayer with me? Would you invite Jesus into your heart and your life today? Dear Jesus, I want to see you today. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. I acknowledge that I've sinned. Forgive me of all of my sins, please. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. And Lord, I know that you rose again. And Lord, I thank you that you've given me life, and I ask that you would come into my heart, my life, my mind, and that you would be Lord of my life. Thank you for the relationship that you've given me. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. If you said that prayer for the very first time, would you go on our website, torrencenaz.com, and would you just let me know? You can drop me an email, and I'll get in contact with you, or you can call the church office and talk to us or leave a message and uh, I'll get back to you. But I would love to talk to you if you said that prayer. Um, welcome to the family. God is good and he is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, I just wanna thank you so much for this time and uh, have a blessed week and a walk in the knowledge of the resurrected Savior. God bless you.
thank you so much for spending time today uh, just in the word with us and, and just worshiping the Lord. Thank you so much for, for just uh, your faithfulness. If, if the Torrance Church of the Nazarene is your home church, I'd encourage you to remember uh, honoring the Lord through the giving of your tithes and offering. You can do that online on our website, torrancenaz.com. You can mail a check into the church if that's easier too. Uh, but I want to thank you for your faithfulness. Church, you've been faithful through this, and I know that God has honored that and will continue to honor uh, we'll continue to honor that. Um, thank you for that. God bless you. Um, have a great week. And uh, I do want to remind you that we also will be posting our live Easter service uh, 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 online so you can enjoy that a little bit later. Uh, that's a different s s sermon and uh, a little bit different experience. It's, uh, uh, we, we love doing the online service, but we love doing the live. We are meeting live uh, with social distancing um, and uh, everybody's wearing masks uh, at 10.30 a.m. on Sundays. Uh, so we encourage you and welcome you to join us uh, live in person as well. Uh, have a great week and uh, we'll see you real soon. God bless you.